Hey there, gang. I'm Todd Knock. Welcome to the Art of Todd Knock show here on the Facebook fan page. So glad you could join me. So glad you could hang out. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching on YouTube when this posts to YouTube later on. I'm preparing for the future. So, uh, today I thought I had some free time, so I decided to do another art broadcast. So I opened up the, the suggestion lines on Twitter, here on the Facebook fan page, and on Instagram, asking uh, for character suggestions. Who, who would y'all like to see me draw? And I got a lot, a lot of great suggestions um, from the Marvel Universe, the DC Universe, from... Uh, all, Xenomorph was really uh, hot on, on, on the suggest line, and uh, and people were tapping into my wheelhouse, X-Men characters. I was tempted by Longshot and Beast, but um, I, I have the Star Wars blank cover here, just itching for an illustration. So I decided to go with Darth Vader. Someone suggested Darth Vader. I thought that'd be fun to do, and a bit of a challenge to do. He's not exactly easy to draw, so... We're going to draw Darth Vader today. So I appreciate everyone coming in. Thanks for all the kind words. So glad you're here. So I'm going to flip the uh, camera around and we're going to start drawing because we got a lot of work to do here to try to get Darth Vader looking just right. I'll do, as always, as always, I'll do my best to answer your questions while I draw. Sorry, my alarm was going off there. I don't know if that affects the edit of the show. Might have to edit that out for YouTube. So uh, I'll do, like I said, I'll do my do my best to answer your questions <laughs> as I draw and. Um, but yeah, a lot of my focus will goes on the art. I think I already said that. Hopefully my alarm going off didn't uh, mess that up. Um, so um, we'll take care of the alarm if it goes off again. I think it's still on snooze. So this is too much. TMI, TMI, my friends. So we're gonna flip around and uh, get to drawing. So let's see. Got my Star Wars blank cover and using my Pentel Twist Erase 0.5 HB lead mechanical pencil. So, um, so in preparation for this, I did do a kind of a quick little sketch of what I of a pose I was considering. So we'll see if I if I go this route. This is what I'm thinking of doing, but we'll see what happens as I get onto the uh, start drawing on the cover here. So, just kind of roughing in the body shapes here. Considering the foreshortening, the hand going down to the elbow, back up towards the torso, trying to create that depth. Get the other arm going there. Saber go right there. So a lot of my thought goes into this process here. It really, really uh, gets the brain working. So it's a little more challenging to talk while I sketch at this stage because my a lot of the brain power is going into into this stage of the process. A lot of the, as I like to call it, the puzzle, putting the puzzle together. So it's not as much of a chatty. This is why sometimes I do, I pre-do this stage, but I know a lot of people like to see it in real time from blank page to illustration, so that's why I chose not to pre-record this part, but it also makes it a little more challenging to chat, even though I appear to be able to talk right now, so just don't give me any chewing gum, otherwise my brain will completely crash. Wow. 
welcome everyone. Welcome to the people who are just now joining. Okay, and then we're gonna got his uh, cod piece here, and then to the thighs. And we have uh, his capes. He's got a series of capes. We often forget that he has this draping on the inside that comes from the uh, covers the sides here and then flows down to the side and then his cape beyond that. So it's not so it's easy to forget this part. Am I excited for the the psych the Christmas psych episode this December? Yes. Absolutely, as a Sean Spencer cosplayer, very, very excited that uh, Psych is returning for that special double-sized Christmas episode. Let's see, get the cape flowing through here. Under cape, down here. Shoulder, big cape, coming this way. Under cape on this side. So I got a lot of lines going on here, and I haven't even gotten to roughing in his face yet. That's a puzzle unto itself. So just getting the rough shapes in here. So you now let's work on his mask here, his eyes, face. My niece, my four-year-old niece, has just now discovered Star Wars. I introduced her to her over Christmas and now she's a Star Wars fan and she loves how cute Darth Vader's face is. It's so funny how a four-year-old perceives things, you know, she's, she sees Darth Vader as cute. She goes, oh I love his cute little face. It's like, no, he's a bad guy. He's supposed to be scary, not cute. But she sees what she sees. Let's see if you if if you wanted to become a better artist, what tips and practices would I recommend? Uh, let's see. Well, life drawing, life drawing is huge. Um, you want to look into that. It also depends on the type of art you want to go into. So, so but just generally, any art classes you can take will help you, especially life drawing. Um, um, classes on the type of art you want to do, uh, what type of medium you want to work in. Um, you know, if it's painting or pen and ink illustration, stuff like that, try to take classes whenever possible. Uh, get some art instruction that'll help you progress further faster. Uh, more than likely, uh, your, your results may vary. So, and then just the habit of drawing every day practice as much as possible as much as possible cannot cannot uh, stress that enough
Am I using any reference for this? I did uh, do a Google search for uh, Darth Vader, and I have some reference pulled up here on my iPad, uh, just because some of the details um, I want to make I'm not as familiar with, or I can't remember off the top of my head as accurately. So uh, I do have some uh, reference to help remind me uh, some of the more specific, some of the, more of the specifics of uh, Darth Vader's design, costume and design. We'll fill in the details on his little uh, speak and spell chest module later on. Same with his belt buckle and his walkie-talkie and Texas Instrument calculator that go on his belt here. That's what I'm assuming these things are. So, henceforth, that's what they shall be. Because I said henceforth. Can't argue with a henceforth. Okay, so there are the pencil roughs. We're just going to dive right into the inks and, uh, and take this to the next level. Let's push in closer here on the face so you can see more of the details as I go. Make sure we're in focus. Am I going to be at Comic-Con this year? Uh, yes, yes I will be. I'll be at San Diego Comic-Con in Artist Alley. More info to come on toddknock.com, so stay tuned. Using the 08 Pigma Micron multi-liner. Whoa, what's going on here? Rig. Rig started falling down on me. That ain't right. Sorry for that, gang. It's live TV. You know how it is when we're working with live TV. Working without a net. We know why I'm working without a net, right? Because the net didn't show up for work. So I gotta do this without her. But I'm used to it. I'm used to it now.
Was it blurry? Sorry, gang. Let's uh, try focusing there again. Probably got out of focus when the when the rig slid. So I apologize for that. Thanks for letting me know. So, do I watch the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, season three comes on tomorrow, doesn't it? Will I be offering it commissions at San Diego Comic Con? I plan to. Um, don't see any reason why I wouldn't, but you'll want to stay tuned to toddknock.com for updates on my commissions, uh, commission info and possible uh, pre-con commissions. So stay tuned. I encourage people to subscribe to the RSSS feed so that you get updates, uh, emailed updates when there's uh, when I or email notification when I post an update. I guess is a better way to say that. So um, if you don't want to miss out subscribe to my RSS RSS feed. What was my favorite character I ever drew? Uh, wow, my favorite character I ever drew? Wow, interesting question. Favorite character I ever drew? Um, well, I love... It's, I can't say there's one. I can't say there's one character. Uh, I just love drawing superheroes in general. So, um, But some of my favorites... Um, X-Men characters, for certain. That's been my favorite comic book since I was 14 years old. 14? Or was I 13? 13 years old, since I was 13 years old. Um, so, love drawing X-Men. But I also love drawing Spider-Man. And different DC characters as well. So... Going with the red eyes, um, if we're able to take this to color, yeah, definitely we'll have the kind of that reddish tint to his uh, to his eyes. Absolutely. So let's come over here to this hand. Favorite Star Wars character? Um, you know, I have really found that uh, my favorites are R two and three PO. I mean, I love all the characters. I mean, it's part of my childhood, so uh, and and beyond. But I just have an all new appreciation for R two and three PO. So I'd say they are probably my current favorites. I have like seventeen R two D two T shirts as it is, and by seventeen I mean two. But it's more fun to say seventeen. Try it sometime. When someone asks you a question with a quantifiable answer, just answer 17 and see what they say. 
and see how much fun you have. No love for BB-8? Well, I no, no, that's not the case at all. Not the case at all. I think BB-8 is great. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. It's just... I've only gotten to experience him for one movie, and I didn't grow up with him. So, I do appreciate and enjoy BB-8. And like I said, all the characters are my favorites, but... Uh, well, not all of them are my favorites, but I, I like a lot of the characters. But it's just... Um, currently... R2 and 3PO rank high on the list at the moment. Exactly, Ambrosia. That's right. How many dogs do you have? 17. That's that's the way you play the, uh, the 17 game. It's a simple game. Everyone's a winner. Who or what would be my spirit superhero? Um, wow, that's an interesting question, Tony. Who or what would be my spirit superhero? Uh, you know? Let's see. I would say... I would say probably Longshot. Longshot or Warlock from the... Longshot from the X-Men comics and Warlock from the New Mutants comics would probably be my spirit superhero. Probably the more I think about it, it would be long shot. Or not long shot, I'm so sorry. Though I, uh, the more I think about it, it would be Warlock. Warlock is what I meant to say. Long shot was just the first one that came to mind, but I think Warlock would be the character I would settle on at this moment. You left my work. How do I feel about Rick and Morty? Um, I don't. I don't. Ha I don't really know a lot about Rick and Morty. I have not watched their shows, so I can't really speak to that. I hear it's popular. I hear it is a popular show. So, um, but that's that's all I know. I don't have cable, so I don't get to watch a lot of those shows. Would I like to come again to La Mole Comic Con in Mexico? Absolutely. Been there twice. I've had two lovely times there. So let La Mole know we want Todd and his wife back for La Mole. And putting the ridges in his sleeve, or at least the first level of ridges. Same for his gloves. So I don't think he has ridges on the under, the inside part of his arm. I was looking at reference and I was, I think some cosplayers posted some some photos of Vader's gloves, like the details, and it's like, oh, son of a gun, there's different cuts. 
to his gloves. Now I will put the seams in here. I love drawing seams on my gloves. Do I ever use a brush pen? If so, how do I like them? I do use brush pens, uh, and I like them very much. Um, I use the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen, which I might end up using at some point in this illustration. And I also use the Zebra Brush Pens. Um, the, 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 the uh, medium and the fine brush pens. And uh, yeah, they are two heavily used um, pens in my arsenal, absolutely. I'm looking at my reference here. I'll show you what I got for reference. Whoops, lost it. Come back, Google. So I'm using this here for my reference so that I can see how his, um, his uh, I guess that'd be a breastplate of some sort kind of works. It's kind of like light gray, dark gray, black. I want to try to get accuracy in how I draw that so. Light gray, dark gray, black. Light gray, dark gray, black. That's black. That's gray. This is black. Do the same on the other side. Light gray, dark gray, black. Dark gray, black. Okay. See, I'll switch out to a finer point micron, the zero one. Who's who's better, Psychic Man or Big Head? How can you ask a question like that? You can't have one without the other. There is no better. It's both. You have to have Psychic Man and Big Head to get the full effect. This is referencing a very specific episode of Psych where. Um, Sean and Gus go solve a a crime at a comic book convention in season one, which I watched just not too long ago while I was working. So it's a little fresh on the brain. How psyched am I for the new psych movie, pun intended? Yes, I am, very much so. In fact, uh, so many people know that I'm a psych fan from my Sean Spencer cosplays that uh, I've been getting that question pretty regularly since the uh, news broke. Uh, very, very excited. I think it you are as well. December can't come soon enough. Let's see. 
pretty handy to find better reference where he's not covering up that one walkie-talkie on the side of his belt. There we go. Should be a decent enough reference. What's my favorite episode of Psych? Ah, man. I can't think of a, uh, one favorite episode. There's just too many good ones. What's your favorite episode? How do I maintain the light and weights visible in characters that have that much black in the costume? Um, well, part of it is I'm, I'm accounting for uh, for the black in the costume, and so uh, some of the line weights will will not be as prevalent. And then I go in and I adjust, I beef up the the line weights where where necessary. So I know some of these line weights will be sacrificed to the black that gets filled in. So it's all just part of the process for me. What kind of paper do I use to get the ink well? Uh, I use uh, Bristol board, Strathmore or Canson uh, Bristol board, smooth Bristol board, preferably. And I don't really seem to have any problems with the inks in that regard. Okay, let's see. I'm going to switch over to my zebra brush pen. Oops, sorry about that, gang. For some of these longer contours. top of his booth there, the little kneecap part. What's my favorite cover that I've drawn? Oh, that's easy. My Secret Empire Wears Hydra variant. 
I got to draw so many characters on that. It was so much fun. Took a long time to draw. Well, a long time for me to draw. And, uh, but so much fun, so worth it. Now we're going to get the folds of the cape back here. Get this other hand going. So you'll switch back to the Pigma Micron. You tuned in late. Did Annette show up for work today? No, you missed it earlier in the show. I, I had mentioned that I'm working without Annette. So, yeah, no Annette at, for the today's broadcast. I don't know why I have her employed to help produce these things. So, yeah, today, like always, working without a net. I got. Wonder if I have any Darth Vader reference for or light, lightsaber reference in this shot. I don't. Let me pull up lightsaber. I want to make sure I get the hilt right. There we go. Carry it on down. Would I ever do a sketch of Sean and Gus as Booster Golden Blue Beetle? Hasn't that been done before? Has somebody, I thought I saw someone ha, had done an illustration like that. 
If it hasn't been done, yeah, I might give it a whirl. But if it has been done, I I don't know if I would I don't know if I would do that. I might. But if it's already if somebody else had already thought of it, then I might let it go. How about Farscape? Ever draw anything there? Uh, someone had requested a Farscape character for a, a convention commission uh, a couple of years ago. He's that uh, that one uh, froggy looking dude with the big, big bushy eyebrows. I never watched the show, so I don't know his name, but he's the he was the Muppet character with the big eyebrows. Um, I drew him. But unfortunately, uh, not having cable, uh, I did not get to watch Farscape. But here it's popular, or you know, it was a really well received show in its day. What was that back in the late 90s? Have I decided if I'm going to do colors? I haven't yet, but uh, if I were to, that would be a separate broadcast. We're not going to have enough time to do colors in this broadcast. Uh, so this will be, uh, if this becomes a multi-part one, this will be part one, the line art phase. Get the under cape going here. Sorry if I've been off camera there, gang. So let's see, I need to grab one more tool here. Let me see where that's at. Ah. Be right back, friends. Just grabbing my colored microns. So I want, if this were to go to color, which it more than likely will, I want to ink Vader's lightsaber in red. Just like that. It'll make for a nice color hold for that stage. Let's see, just a little bit more to his cape here. And then I can erase all these lines. before filling in all the black areas. Let's pull back here just a little bit so you can see where we're at so far. 
Where's my Statler Mars plastic eraser? And gently pull down to not risk wrinkling the artboard. And also to not pull up the ink, the vibrancy of the black inks. I know a lot of people struggle with that, having their, their line work fade when they erase. I don't seem to have that problem so much with the using the microns and erasing with the Statler Mars plastic eraser. All right, so that's where we're at so far. Got a few little details to fill in here, like the mesh. Under his helmet. Continuing that mesh through the face grill, through his grill. All right, now with my Pentel pocket brush pen. Let's just drop some blacks in here. So I'm going to leave a lot of this open for the color stage. And so I'm going to be coming in with lots of different uh, grays and probably some reds here from the uh, lightsaber. So since our light source will be coming from the lightsaber, more than likely, at least one light source, I'm going to put the heavier shadows on the opposite side of his lightsaber. So this is where mastery of the brush pen can really uh, come in handy. It can be a lot of fun because you can create shapes. That's great when you're doing reflective surfaces or the wrinkles of a cape or his cloak. You don't have to sit there and draw in those shapes necessarily. You can just let the, the brush pen do a bulk of that work, but it takes some practice to get to that stage. If you go really light, you can get that secondary line there. You know, nice little detail lines. Little bloops and bleeps and blorps. Well, actual terms that we used back in the Extreme Studio days when talking to the inker about what we wanted or what we envisioned for the line art. It's like, oh, could you put a few more bleeps and bloops? Okay, right, right, that right there, that was a bloop right there. Putting those little bloops in. Little little dot, little line that goes to a dot. We had all sorts of code words back then. Now a lot of my mastery for the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen came from using the Copic Sketch Marker brush tips. That helped kind of give me a little more confidence. I still had a lot to learn with the brush pen, but the uh, 
the the Copic brush pen kind of the that sketch tip really helped help kind of bridge the gap so I could feel a little more confident with the um, the straight up brush tip where the Copic sketch marker brush tip is almost like halfway between a brush tip and a marker like a brush bristle, bristles and a marker tip it's a little a little firmer so it wasn't as didn't get away from me as quickly nice about a brush tip is you can let it the more you press down or how little you press down changes the the shape so you can kind of let it dance across the page that's what I like to call it so you can get that texture that that ridgy texture on Vader's sleeves we'll do that again for the other sleeve and the pants we got his kind of his cloak under cape thing I've been calling it So I just let it bobble up and down and it creates that ridgy sort of texture which makes it kind of quick and easy to do that now mind you it's taken practice to learn how to do that that texture we'll do it here on this sleeve too boop 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 bloop 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 just I push I just like start to glide down and then I just press in back and forth just beep 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 Press, 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 press. And then larger swaths as we get further down there because there's more shadow. And the belt, walkie-talkie. Now I don't know if this is a walkie-talkie, it probably isn't because you know you never saw them on a walkie-talkie but I like to call it a walkie-talkie because I don't know what that little those little side consoles do I'm sure there is a reason for that I just have not bothered to look it up yet maybe I'll do that later tonight what are all the devices on Vader's belt for probably life support something or other maybe his Sith vitamins or something little, little dispenser for Sith vitamins in the shapes of all his favorite Sith Lords and Fred Flintstone Oh, you thought it was, they were his speakers when you were a kid? That's funny. Makes sense. Sounds plausible to me. Vader comes blasting onto the blockade runner. You ready to rock? And then just pumps up his Sith jams.
That's why he had such sweet entrance music. That's right. The Imperial March playing right off of his hip speakers. Vader, you thought of everything. More likely it was the Emperor who thought of that. Or maybe Vader could have thought of that. He's like, hey, yo, palps. I need my theme song blaring every time I enter someplace. Scares the crap out of those rebels. Could I get some, like, speakers on the old hipsters here? And Palps is all like, Psst, Fade, you got it, bro. Let me hook you up. Beats by Palpatine. They're wireless. Sorry, gang. I'm so focused on the uh, on the brushwork here. I've not looked to see if there are any questions. How about doing Luke Skywalker? Maybe someday, when the guy gets hip speakers. There's speakers for your hips. I think I have a product. I'm going to take the Shark Tank now. See if I can get Dave Prowse to come in with me as the celebrity backer. I think that can help help land a deal with the sharks. They see you've already got a celebrity who's who's in on it. Yes, the internet is being a pain today, huh? Make sure those uh, boots here are in the frame. This texture here is really where the bloops come into play. Every time I push down, it creates a bloop. And it gives that texture, that wrinkly texture, to the seams of Vader's pants. In fact, let's push this in here a little bit more for better clarity of the details. And the further I get down to this side of his leg, the more the more black I want and less white to create a, create a greater sense of shadow as opposed to the top of his thigh. So see, it's like more lights hitting here, less lights hitting there.
Have I seen Kim Jong Ji's drawing of the Civil War II characters? I have not. At least not that I recall. I follow him on follow him on the Instagram, but I haven't. I don't know if he's posted that there. I haven't seen it. But that guy does some amazing arts. Texture out this leg. This knee cap boot thingy, guard, knee guard, shin, shin boot thingy, it's a technical term. I still have some uh, spaces over here on his gloves, these ridges. Thing more I wanted to do here on his helmet, just a little bit. Okay, go back to my pig micron pens. I'm gonna cross hatch in these. Uh, it's parts of this cape. Just kind of like the way it shadows it out a bit in the line work. Just like that. Well, adding any background uh, depends on how things go through the color stage. Since he's taken up so much of the cover here, I don't know if I want to add too much of a background because I don't want it to compete with Vader himself. I don't want to make the cover image too busy. Just some little fades here. I'm only doing these on the cape and cloak parts, not the the ridges of his bodysuit. That's got enough detail as it is. Doing that there might be a little too much.
Okay. So now, let's actually add a little more dark here into his speak and spell. Speak and spell of the dark side. Okay. So there's the line art. And you know what? I'm feeling a little crazy today. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the colors. Are y'all down for that? Feel free to stick around for the broadcast if you want to do the Copics. Usually I don't do line art and Copics in the same video, but uh, today, today I think we're going to, are we going to do that? Yes, yes we are. So starting with some neutral gray. Neutral gray five. Mind you, we want to keep, be mindful that there's going to be some red highlights coming into this side of his armor. So I want to keep that in mind ahead of time. So I'm going to leave a good chunk of this here on this side and it thins out as we go over towards this side, open for, for the red. It's going to be less red over here on, on this farther side. So right now I'm using the neutral gray 5 for all of this over here all the gray areas on his body. In fact, I'm going to use a different shade of gray for the the cloak and cape. Now that I think about it, we'll go a little bit darker. So neutral 5 for the bodysuit and for the dark parts of the gray here. or the dark gray color. We'll push this in a little bit further. Okay, so let's go to the neutral seven for the darker parts of his cape. And I'm going to use the neutral seven here for the inner lining, so it's really going to shadow that out. Because I really want the lighter grays to pop or the lighter shades. Let's go to a neutral six here for his cape.
a little shading on the the helmet other parts of the dark areas just a little bit I want to be careful that he doesn't get lost in a mishmash of gray and black coming in with the red from the lightsaber is really going to help kind of differentiate things as well I hope Get a little cool gray here on his belt on this part here I need to pull up my Vader reference again So I can get all of his speak and spell box parts correct. So that's a little cool gray three that I used right there. Cool gray three. Now for some blues and reds. Let's see this top button is blue. Little B14. Little R24 for the red. We have one red switch right here. Red button. Red button, red button, red button. Let's see, and then we have some green. Some G14. That little button right there. And then, uh, let's see, we need some cool gray six. For the speak and spell box itself. And over here as well. Cool gray two. Blend that on through. Like that. Let's see, now we need to take some lighter shades, some neutral three. Working some neutral three in through here. Blend that on through. Let's come with some really dark, dark shades here for the black part is breastplate, some neutral eight is what I'm going to start with. So it's really dark. And some neutral six. And some neutral four. kind of blending a lot of these colors on through all these shades. Now I need to drop some neutral gray into the into the black parts of his lightsaber hilt. Actually I'm gonna come in here with some cool grays as well. Then he's got the silver part to his hilt. A little cool gray, was that cool gray three I was using? Now I'll come in with some B triple zero. To really silver this out a little bit. Let's go back to that neutral three. Blend through the cod piece there a little bit. Do you think 
are, do you think you, I'm sorry. I think you're asking what are my most refilled Copic markers? Uh, my, my E's, which I use for flesh tones, dark and light skin flesh tones. My E, or my reds, R24, R27, my blues, uh, yellows, and of course my grays. I refill these things quite regularly. So, those would be some of my most refilled colors because I use them so frequently. This is the neutral three that I'm using right now. So we can see Vader's kind of coming together there a bit. Now a fun thing here is his, his lenses oftentimes are kind of a dark red-ish color. So I'm going to try a little trick here. Coming in with some R56. Actually I want to put darker on this side. So it's kind of a burgundy sort of color. But I'm going to come in here with some gray. So we're going to take this neutral three. Kind of blend that through a little bit. Kind of mute it out a little bit. So it still has the, the red tint in there. That's not overpowering. I might come back in with a little more R56 again. Just put in different layers of color, different coats. I want a little darker shade of gray in here to kind of give it a darker lens look. So it kind of has that red, reddish look to his lenses, which we sometimes see in the movies. Now, um, let's, let's uh, color that uh, lightsaber. So as you saw earlier, I had inked it with red micron. I'm going to use my, my triangle here for a straight edge. And we're going to start to create a lit up lightsaber. Now I'm leaving the center of it white, as white as possible. That's step one, R27. Now let's come to, uh, let's try a pinkish sort of hue. So it does this harsh gradation from red to pink to white. So I'm coming with some RV13. Going over, half over the red, half over into the white. Do the same on this side. And as I go over them, go over that spot again and again, going over that red, it kind of blends it out. And so it blends from the red to the pink to the white. So let's take the R, R24. And um, is R24 the right color? Yeah, let's just do this little R24 here. We're going to keep that R RV13 handy as well. So it's a little red into pink into gray. It's starting to give a little, little life to Vader. So depending on how much red and pink I put through here, will show how harsh of a lighting I'm giving this. So the, the light from the red is the saber is coming this way, so it would hit anything that is in the, in the way there. So it even comes all the way over here to the side of the hand. Not as much as we would over there, because the hand's a little farther away, but we're going to put some of this in here to give give it some pop off of all the gray onto the speak and spell definitely onto this part of the hand so it's hitting on the top part of the finger where the bottom part of the finger stays gray onto the belt here a little bit 
I'm going to blend a lot of this with the, the pink through so we get that gradation a bit. Onto the cod piece here. Maybe a little bit more here on the breastplate. Onto the chain a little bit. And onto this side of the leg just a little bit. On that part of the cape a little bit. The knees. Onto this part of the cape. Even down the side of the saber just a little bit on this part of the cape. We'll just really fill this in red here. Do I worry about picking up any different colors on the tips of the marker? No, not at all because, uh, or at least nothing that really concerns me. Cheap markers, you know, the kind we get when we're in high school or in grade school, those, yeah, those will pick up the color like if you do pink over black, you get black in the tip of your marker, it's it's destroyed. But Copic markers are made to blend, so they don't pick up the color. A lighter color does not pick up the darker color in the tip. It very rarely happens. And if it does happen, you can just replace the tip uh, with a refill pack. It's not that expensive for a pack of uh, refill tips, replacement tips. And um, and it's great. It's great. So you can you can blend the colors as freely as you want. You don't have to worry about infecting the tip of the marker with another color. Like you would, like yellows. Yellow you'd always keep far away from the black because you knew it would just jack up your yellow so bad. But now, I don't even, I don't even think twice about that. So now I'm doing that RV13 over the R, what was it, the R24. So I'm just putting in as much red or pink as I want or need. And it really changes the tone of the piece. And let's see, let's pull a little of the pink down through here. Okay. Now what I do want to do is let's reflect, put a reflected light over through here. So let's go to the, we'll try the B01. Just in contrast, get some blue in here. And on this side, everything hitting this way would be a different light, a reflected light, if you will. Have you seen my Princess Leia uh, sketch cover? I did something very similar with her. So this guy's kind of keeping it in the family, a family sort of feel. So just dropping some blue here on this side. It helps break up the gray and it gives Vader some pop. Some of the, you know, it's not just all a big mish, 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 mish I can't say it. <laughs> Mishmash, mishmash of, of black and gray. I'm even pulling some of this blue here into the eye. Woo. Sorry for the zoom in there. And it kind of creates a different texture to the lens. I don't know if you can see that there. Right here where I put the blue, just a little bit on that side, and it's kind of rounded out the lens in kind of a fun, funky way. Some blue on this side leg. Don't want to use a lot of blue. I'm just doing a little bit just as a kind of a contrast. Because I liked how, how it worked with the Leia piece so much, the Leia commission for uh, sketch covers that I've done. You know what I am going to do for this? I think I'll do the uh, space texture since we got the time. This is a long video and if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for sticking around. This is probably one of the longer videos I've uploaded uh, from a broadcast. I try not to let them go this long, but 
with some technical difficulties earlier in the broadcast, which we edited out more than likely. And with the free time I have here, I just thought, let's just go for it. So coming back with some neutral four, just kind of blending things through, dropping a heavier shadow in certain places. So let's do my space background and we'll just, um, that, that nebula type of thing I do, um, you may have seen it on some of my commission art pieces that I've posted from different conventions. So what we're going to do is just kind of do a very amorphous blob. So a little light blue pencil here. You might, might not be able to see it, but that's the point, is that it's not supposed to be really visible. We'll just do a uh, kind of like this nebula that's cutting through this way. So, um, and we'll do cool grays. Usually I do neutral grays, but since we have so much neutral on Vader here, um, we'll use uh, some, some neutral grays. I mean, some cool grays instead. And the nebula is going to have all these colors that cut through here. So I keep in mind where I'll have some of my colors. And reference space, gang. That's what I have done. My first. My first time I, I, did a, I did a Copic Nebula, so I put in cool gray 8 in these spots here. I'm doing a, a nebula that's cutting through this way. Now I want to come in with some purple. I'm going to do, use purples and kind of turquoise colors for my nebula. So I'm going to start scribbling in from that cool gray 8 into... Over the, over the, the purple, or over the gray, sorry, over the gray. Still keeping some white through there. You want that, that, that purple to really start to blend and mix with that shade of gray. A lot of blending and mixing going on here. So I got some purple going on. Then we're going to come in with some turquoise, some BG34. Just scribbling that on top of the purple. So it starts to gray up and muddy a little bit, but we want that. There are parts where it's bright and vibrant, part, parts where it's muddy, and that's exactly what I want. Just blending it on top of each other. Cut through here. Still keeping some of that white through there. So I've blended in some, some turquoise there. Now we're going to come in with some pink. The same pink I was using here on Vader. Some RV13. Start sm smudging some of this in. And then a much lighter shade. Some R11. A very light muted shade of pink. And just blending over all of it. Just scribbling over it all. And it starts to just pull each of those colors into the mix. So I want these lighter colors cutting through the middle here of the nebula. Now I'm going to come in with some lighter shades of cool gray. I'm going to come in with some cool four a little bit. So it's just a series of blending. And the more you blend, the more subtle the, the nebula is going to be. So that maybe certain places you want it to be subtle, some places you want it to be stark. Contrasts of color. So now some cool gray two. The lighter you go, the more subtle the 
the blending and muddying. So it starts to create that, that, that effect I'm looking for. Now I might come back in with a little more darker shade so I can have those darker black parts of space if I've blended too much come back and add some some dark again using the cool gray 7 like let's go even darker to the cool gray 10 let's go as dark as cool gray 10 in some of these parts so I'm reapplying some of the dark that I blended out before now I'm going to still come back in and blend that again I'll use different shades of gray or maybe even some colors but right now let's come in with some cool gray 3 just to get that gradation from the really dark into the color a little bit stronger or a little more subtle in the blending I'll be sure to post a scan of this image when I'm done so you can see kind of the, the, the subtleties there. But you can see here some of the R, R11 is still visible, the R13, the BG34, the V04. The V04 was the purple I used initially there if I, um, if I uh, didn't say that before. So now what I then do is come in with my Uniball Signo, Uniball Signo white gel pen. It's my favorite. Let's see, I want to put a highlight here and I like that the I left a little white here on this eye but this did not have any white left so I going in and adding the white highlight back to Vader's eye but now I'm just going to come in here and dot in star field pattern so you just kind of clump some stars together what it's hard to get true randomness when you draw them in like this. It's not, not going to be. We can make it look like it's random, but it's not going to be truly random. But you don't want to do, you know, equally spaced stars. That's that's going to look look too thought out. You want to just stipple it. It's called this technique is called stippling, and uh, you just you want to clump some together and then have big open spaces where there are no stars. And then some random ones that are just kind of off by themselves. Happy little stars. So you want to give the illusion of randomness when you're really not able to create true randomness when you're doing it. When you're hand drawing in your stars. It would almost be better to do a splatter effect, but I don't want to take the time to mask off Vader, get the paint, splatter it. That would be too many steps to the procedure. So I, I just, for time's sake, just, uh, and still looks, ends up looking cool, uh, draw them in, or dot them in, I should say, with the Uniball Signa white gel pen. I get mine online most times. If I can't make it into the art supply store, I buy mine at jetpens.com. And you'll see this will this will show up a little more clearly when you see me post a photo of this piece on my social media. So be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Todd Knock on those two. Be sure to subscribe to my Facebook page, or if you're watching on my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. And be sure to stop by any of the other social media pages that you might have that you're not following me on, go ahead and give those a follow. I try to post art there pretty regularly. And sometimes, if I'm at a convention, I'll post my my random cosplay pics. Doctor Who, Sean Spencer from Psych, and occasionally Scott Summers, aka Cyclops from the X-Men. Scott Summers and Sean Spencer are my casual cosplays. So there you go. Now sometimes what I like to do is make like one really big circle like for a really big star off in the distance, kind of put a few of those throughout here, just kind of really build it up into a nice big circle. And then 
Let's see, make sure that's dry. What I like to do is use my straight edge from the center of that circle, go up, go down, being careful not to smudge the ink that I've laid down. Go right, go left, and make a shining star. Oh, look at that. A shining star. You could have a star war all up in here now. All up in here. So, let me uh, put my autograph on here, and this piece is done. And what is today? Today is the 18th, is it not? Is it the 18th? Yes, I remember the day correctly. There we go. May 18th, 2017. Hey, there we go. We finally got through it. The, this Darth Vader piece was a bit of a long one. I usually don't do broadcasts this long, but sometimes when you get on a roll, you just kind of have to go for it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you want to see how this final piece turned out, just click in the link in the information below, and uh, I provide a link there for you every time in every video, almost every video. Um, so thanks for, for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all the, the thumbs up and the comments. I really appreciate everyone's support, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all again real soon. Keep on drawing and keep having fun. Take care.